right guys welcome back to the channel we are uh, on the road we're supposed to be technically should have been uh, gone a few days ago but things have come up and been working all week we got a tournament tomorrow and I haven't even touched the water <clears throat> brand new body of water for me I've never been on it I don't even know if there's been a tournament on this lake before it's Capitogama Lake for the Bass Nation Team Trail. So it's gonna be a uh, gonna be new. Really wish I would have had some practice time, but hey, sometimes this is the way it goes. Life's gotta come first. <clears throat> sometimes you gotta get to work, and then you can play. But for right now, we're on our way there. I'm doing a whopping 55 miles an hour. 65 so it's gonna take a little bit longer obviously but hey if you save gas if you go up 55 a lot of gas actually so this video is gonna be kind of screwy today I'm not sure how it's gonna go obviously we're starting it off by driving and later once we get there we're gonna to get to the campground that we're gonna stay for tonight only I was gonna try and leave last night, but I didn't get home from work until about eight o'clock, and it's a four and a half hour drive from where I'm at to get to where I need to be. So it didn't make sense, you know, working all day, and I've been getting up at 4 a.m. all week for a couple weeks. It doesn't make sense to drive when I'm that tired and in the dark. Your eyes tend to get tunnel vision sometimes, and Sure, you can do it, but there's a lot of deer up where I'm going. You got to be alert. Instead of doing that and risking running into a deer, just leave this morning. Storm, it's going to be storming up there this morning, and I'm not going to go out fishing in a storm. It doesn't make sense to me because what's the reason why I don't do that is because I'm, it's not going to be storming on tournament day. Well, they say. We'll see what happens, but. If it's not going to be storming on tournament day, I don't want to go out and practice on a day where it is storming because I'm, it's not that I'm fishing for the wrong fish, I'm probably going to be fishing the wrong patterns or the wrong, you know what I mean? Things are going to be a little bit different. And you can go out and, you know, locate the fish, but if it's storming out, say if it's storming out and it's cloudy and fish are going to be in a different place than they would be as if it were, I guess like right now, where it's sunny where I'm at. Bluebird sunny and then cloudy. Fish act differently. So I don't want to practice on a day where it's storming if it's not going to be storming on tournament day. Some guys can do it. Some guys make it work, but sometimes if I, if I do that, I can get confused on patterns. That's just me. I just that's just what I what I do. Not, I don't not what I do, but I can get confused on patterns. But this is that's just how I work. I, I won't you know fish in a tournament or fish practice on a day where it's storming when tournament day is not going to be storming. The reason why today's this video is going to be a little all over the place is because it's. We gotta do some work to the trolling motor. In our talon, well, our talon already kinda of have an idea of what's going on with it, and there's nothing I can do for it right now. I have the piece coming in the mail. So far, I think it's just a fuse. I'll do a video on it later. And then the trolling motor, I have the same issue with it as I did last year. I, I bought a new, uh, it's a new Altrex, and I installed it. And what it was doing is it was popping out a spot lock, but it wasn't doing the same beeps as if you, you hit the pedal to knock out a spot lock. Those beeps are different than the beeps that I'm getting. But the beeps that I'm getting it is still knocking me out a spot lock. And what Encoda told me was that those beeps that I'm getting are the fact that it's losing power short, like, like a short I don't know, it's like a, it's like losing power for like a split second. And then that's why it's knocked me out of spot lock. So, a couple of things they said to do was to index it. I did that. 
and I, I, I followed a bunch of their I followed a bunch of things you know you're supposed to be doing and, and so I did that I'll go more into detail in another video so I did all that stuff and it seemed to be working it worked um, the rest of the, the rest of the year and uh, now I'm getting the same thing again it worked for uh, the first day that I was out this spring no issues the second day I was out I started having issues right away in the morning and then later on in the day, it seemed like it quit for a while. I, I don't know, I, I can't pinpoint it. So I'm gonna have to pull it apart and figure it out. And once I do, maybe I'll post a video separately on that. But that's kind of what the day is kind of looking like for me. We're driving, we're gonna head to the campground, probably do some work on the trolling motor, and then get out and do a little bit of practice, try to locate some fish, see how that goes. I don't know if we're gonna catch any fish, but well, I mean, what I mean is I don't know how many fish I'm gonna set the hook on. I want to try if, if we do find any, I, I do want to try and save them. <laughs> but obviously, I want to know if they're the right fish. You know, if they're walleye or they're smallmouth. This lake we're going to is supposed to be predominant. It's supposed to be a huge population of smallmouth bass. I don't know. We'll see how that goes. But this year, for the tournament stuff, uh, my partner John, he's taking a break this year. So filling in, I have uh, Thomas. Thomas is gonna step in for this year and it should be fun. So stay tuned and well, this video's not over with, so we'll, uh, we'll see you here shortly. All right guys, well, we made it. We're in the campground. And uh, I'm gonna start working on that boat now. But uh, next time you see me, we'll be on the water. So we'll see you there. That's crazy. I just had a, I think I just had a bite. Holy gosh. We might need to try this tomorrow too. I, I was, I'm, I'm literally marking Mark a couple of really good fish. I don't know what they are, but they're moving around. So to me, that's telling me it's smallmouth. I don't. I, I have no idea. Hey guys. So, so what you're wondering? Where's the practice video going? Like, what happened to it? Well, that's what we're gonna go over right now. So, <laughs> uh, funny story. I brought the camera, and the battery that's in it. But I didn't bring the battery. My my charging. Uh, like I bring a separate charging pack for my batteries and my battery packs. I leave them plugged in inside the boat. I forgot all of those at home. So I only had the camera and um, yeah, so the camera died during the first day of practice. Well, the only day of practice. It's hard for me to even call it a practice day. Technically, I, I'm gonna call it, like I, I fished this tournament without practice because we got there, it was pretty much Saturday morning when we left. About four hours, four or five hours to get there. By the time we got in the water, it was probably about, I don't know, one o'clock. 
in the afternoon and you can't break down a new body of water in a few hours. And we only had a few hours, we had a meeting that night and I wanted to get off the water at a decent time. I was also working on the trolling motor, I had issues and the Minn Kota talent on the, on the back. Uh, one of the talents isn't working. The trolling motor issue for another day. I'll go over that in another video. So anyways, I'm working on that and it took a little bit of time to get that fixed. So we really only got like a few hours of practice in and we didn't catch any fish. <laughs> now we finally, I was marking a couple of, a couple of fish. Good chance that they were walleye because they would come up to it and then they just run off. So I, I don't know, maybe they were small moths and, and I just spooked them, I don't know. But we went, we found a spot near the end of the day, well, at the end of our day, I guess, and it had a lot of fish on it. Like I was seeing fish on live scope swimming all over the place and man, okay, I, I don't know what they are, but some of them have to be smallmouth. So I'm like, well, we're not gonna fish it. So Thomas and I didn't finish it, or didn't fit it, fish it, and we left it for the tournament day. And we didn't, we weren't, we didn't know our boat number. So our boat number was 59 out of 63 boats. <laughs> so if anybody had found that spot, which I'm sure somebody did, these guys are good. They, they, they pick apart legs like no tomorrow. I mean, they're, these guys are, are, are really good anglers. So we're pretty much thinking, okay, well, we're not going to make it to our spot or we'll make it to our spot, but there's going to be somebody on it. Well, surprise, there's no one on it, but First of all, we'll finish the practice day. Um, we, we tried a bunch of different things on practice day, and that's, that was Saturday, for the few hours that we had. We, we ran around and tried different things. Here's the thing, it was super windy, so running around wasn't as easy as, I, as I'm explaining. The waves and Capitogama Lake, it doesn't look like it would carry very big waves, but when it runs, when she runs straight down, Straight, when the wind runs straight down inline down the lake, oh yeah, they can get to be some pretty good rollers. Maybe not as big as Leech Lake, but pretty darn big. So it wasn't easy to really run around, pop around, and you know try a bunch of different spots. We did, however, find a couple of spots that had fish. The only problem was, one of them was way down on the lake, and we had to go into the wind to get there. But the spot that we caught, that we found at the end of the day that I saw a lot more fish on than any other spot that we had found in the few time, few hours that we had. Now I wish if we had more time, I could have ran into a bunch of different more spots and could have maybe figured out something a little bit better. The guy, the guy still caught him. You know, there's some really good bags there too that, that went through it, but we'll get to that later. So we found our spot and like I said, we we're like, okay, we're not gonna fish it. So that was practice. Really, I mean, there's really nothing. I mean, yeah, we went out, we ran the water a little bit, and then we found, we looked at a couple of spots, but to me, that's not even really practice. So, I mean, that's why there's a lot of times I'm talking to people, I'm like, yeah, we, we did this without practice, and it's risky, especially on a new body of water. But I was having faith that there's a ton of smallmouth in here and that they, they might be everywhere. That's not always the case, of course, but you know, I was hoping that we would land on something in the few hours that we were there. And we did, uh, well, uh, on a spot that had fish anyways, so. Okay, now, tournament day. I'm gonna do this all in one video because it's it's gonna be kinda short. I'm just gonna describe it pretty quick, but. Tournament day, obviously, no GoPro. Didn't have, uh, didn't have a camera because of the batteries and, and all that stuff, so. Uh, we're Bolt 59. We launch, launch, everything everything goes great. We launch, we get to our spot, no one's on it. We're gonna get to the, the reason why <laughs> in a little bit. Because I figured it out once as soon as we got there. So when we got there, you know, we see a couple of fish there and we're casting around and we're, I'm using, um, Thomas is throwing a small swim bait with a chartreuse uh, head, jig head, and a white swim bait. And that's a pretty good bait for smallmouth you know, almost anywhere. I've caught them in, in multiple different lakes, rivers on that bait. And I was throwing a jerk bait. And I was kind of bouncing around between baits as well. But we threw into there and I can't remember if we caught one there right away. So forgive me about that, but um, it wasn't really producing like we thought. I wasn't seeing the fish either. So I wasn't seeing the fish that were there. 
Now I looked at the water temp. The water temp when we were practicing in, uh, the water temp was about 53. When we were practicing and or on the practice day when we found that spot later in the day, so it was like about what, four or five o'clock, four o'clock I think, and the water temp was higher. And this was a rocky area and kind of a pocket out of the wind. So I, I mean, I don't know if it was a spawning or anything like that, but um, cause I, I, I couldn't, I didn't see them with my own eyes. So I, I was thinking, okay, well, let's just move. They're obviously not here right now. Let's just move. And we just, we, we, we moved. We went down the bank and we found a couple spots. We picked up a couple here or there. Um, we weren't lighting them on fire and we went around to one spot and we, we had a couple hours left. So like, okay, well, let's just run back to that first spot. Cause I had a hunch that they, the fish were there because there was the warmer water and the sun was warming up those rocks, making the water warmer. And it's out of the wind. So it's, warmer all together and it's they're sheltered so that well let's just go back there and see what's there so we did we ran through the waves and the waves i mean it actually wasn't as bad this time around the wind but it was worse than it was supposed to be so that's always fun i mean that's that's the, that's the way it always goes right so forecast the forecast says oh eight mile an hour winds mm, yeah you can probably count on me in 25. <laughs> so, I mean, that's the way it, all, it always goes for our tournament day anyways. Or it's, you know, a huge thunderstorm, lightning storm, whatever it is. You know, it's severe storms, hail, whatever. I don't know. Always seems to work out that way. But we run back to that spot. And now there is a boat. It's not on the spot, but he's 200 feet away. And now I'm kind of thinking about this now because I'm coming in. I'm like, well, okay, so which direction is he going? I don't want to ever cut anybody off. That's not that's not me. That's not how I fish. Even if I think I've got the winning fish on that spot, I'm not going to do it. So I'm looking at that boat. I'm watching him. And I want to make sure that he's not in he's not in motion towards that direction because this is close to the shoreline. So I want to make sure he's not in motion. And I, I notice that he's spot locked. So he, he's anchored down. That's telling me he's fishing that area. I can't tell if he's going this way or that way, but since he's spot locked and anchored down, I move in. And you know, I, I hope, um, I really hope I, don't, I didn't upset him, but it was about 200 feet away and he was spot locked, so I moved in. And I wasn't, you know, there's no other boats in the area at the time. And so we moved in and I started scanning around. The fish were there. I was seeing a bunch of fish in all different directions in, a, in the same fashion that they were on the practice at the end of the day. So I could tell that the fish had moved back up. Now, it, all those fish were not smallmouths. <laughs> and that's okay, because I, I, I knew that was gonna be the case too. So as soon as we were thrown up in there, you know, it's a couple of baits, the swim baits weren't working. So I take out the jerk bait, I chuck it way up in there where I saw the fish, saw a, a fish move, and I'm, I'm using my live scope like kind of like halfway. I use it to find, okay, it's that direction, and I'll cast that direction, and then I, then I, I fish. First cast of the, the jerkbait, catch one. Now, it's not a giant by any means, so, I mean, we definitely need bigger, but it was, I think it was a like one pound, seven ounce. You know, nope, not a big fish. <laughs> But I was happy that we got a, got another fish because now we had, um, I think now we had four fish. Now we just need one more to fill our, our limit. So we kept fishing up in there, and then it took, and then like two casts later, I catch another one. Now this one's a two pound four ounce. So we have, uh, I think at this point it was like a, a, a two, two of them that were two pounds four ounces. Uh, one was a one pound seven ounce, and then. We had two that were one pound, five ounces. So now we have our limit and that's great. So I, I, we're still seeing fish. Now that's not a big limit. It's way low, it's, it's, it's a bad limit. <laughs> we keep fishing because I, we keep marking, I keep marking the fish. I keep seeing them out there. We keep fishing and we do pick a couple more off, but they're, they're not big. We did call out a couple of them. So that was, that was good, you know, but we, only by ounces. We didn't really light them on fire. And then I caught one that was a walleye. <laughs> that cued me in because I kept seeing these fish. They're following my bait. And then as soon as they get close to it, they just turn away. A lot of times, that's what a walleye will do. That, what I found anyway, is they'll come up and just 
you know, if they don't like it, they just, they just put them away. So sometimes, most of the time, if a small mouth is coming up after it, a lot of times they're already interested and they're gonna come in. Not all the time, but that's, you know, my experience with them. So I kept chucking at those fish and then they, they weren't biting. So I was thinking, well, maybe it was a walleye, you know, after I, after I caught that one walleye. And because if it was a pike, I'd have gotten crushed. Pike eat everything. So we just keep keep fishing around, and you know, time's running out now. So when we go and weigh in, we get uh, we have we actually end up with uh, j just over nine pounds, nine pounds, I don't know what nine nine point three, nine point oh three, or something like that. And I think it's nine point oh three. And so we we, we <laughs> out of out of sixty three, we finished fiftieth. Yeah, it's not last, but really wish we had um, more practice time to get more spots and get more tuned into the lake actually because you can't really i mean sometimes you can get lucky figure out a pattern and figure out figure out some things in a few hours but for me it always seems to be that i got to be on the lake for a lot longer than that to figure out a couple of things and then i can expand from there because i always like to have a few different things that i can work with in case things change and things always do change during the tournament time it's they a lot of times it just never stays the same all the way through. So I, that's why I, whenever you see me fishing a tournament, I usually have about, I don't know, eight to 12 rods on the deck because I'm preparing myself for changes, you know, later on. And who knows, maybe some of, maybe the changes the fish make won't even touch any of those rods. I'll have to pull another one out of the rod pocket. That's happened before too. So you just gotta be prepared to make those adjustments and be willing to, you know, throw everything out of the, throw everything out and then start from scratch on a new lure. And that's kind of what I did. I wasn't gonna throw the jerk bait right away and it, it just got the bite. So I just kept throwing that. Thomas got some bites on that swim bait. So he was throwing that. And then you know, we both ended on, on a jerk bait trying to catch some more fish. But I mean, for practically no practice, I'm happy to be able to get a limit. Uh, that lake was fishing tough for a lot of guys. So I feel pretty fortunate to be able to get a limit. And you know, that's, I mean, that's the way it's gonna go sometimes. So I just wanna apologize again, guys. I don't have any of the video footage for you. So that's my bad. I dropped the ball on that one. I was rushing and completely blew my, blew, completely forgot about it. So I apologize for that. I appreciate you guys for watching this and you know, hopefully you guys stick around. The next tournament videos that we have coming up, I will have the camera and batteries with me, hopefully. So stay tuned for that. We got some more content coming up here as well. So always stay tuned for that. My content's gonna be a little bit, you know, spotty here. It's not gonna be on regular, you know. Uh, I'm gonna try to keep it Monday, one, Monday, Monday and Friday for regular videos. And then, you know, of course, uh, Wednesdays will be uh, Quick and Dirty Bait Talks. I have a couple good ones coming up for those quick and dirty bait talks, so stay tuned for those. But uh, I'm working a ton of hours now, so it's hard to start. It's hard to make videos when you're working a lot of hours and and then editing them. So I'm going to try to keep up with it. Uh, I mean, I'm not going to be doing. I'm not going to be working a ton of hours all summer long, so it's just temporary. But so thank you guys for sticking around with me on this one. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, and we'll catch you in the next video.